to thank uh, Mac and Lexington for inviting us all to this free lunch today. We're a very interesting discussion on cyber, the guard, and the grid broke out. And since I'm not an expert either of the cyber, the guard, or the grid, I'm eminently qualified to be up here talking to you all today, I think. So I do have a few interesting things, things to say, though. You know, our, our company's in a little bit in the business of, of this, as a gentleman over here and others. Uh, commercial collaboration with government is hugely important in many dimensions. And I think the Guard offers kind of a unique capability in that regard for some reasons that many of the speakers have already mentioned. But when you think about the Guard, um, very strong ties to the Department of Defense and all the capabilities that come out of that. Very strong ties to industry because many Guards people are in industry. Ties through the state to Homeland Security. So there's a central force here of capability that I think and I think there's been a great vision, and, and it'll be very important over, over many years to, to solve that. Let's talk about the grid a little bit. <clears throat> I think we forget, and I think uh, uh, the person from uh, DOA mentioned there are 3,000 odd companies and probably another 10% government kind of owned, all tied together. And it's very, very strong interrelationships of this grid. We only have to think back to 2003, a little famous uh, blackout that some of us may remember. Some of the young people here may not have been born back then, but uh, all tied to a software bug in an Ohio utility that basically took down most of the Northeast. So that's the implication here. So one of the things we found in the cyber world, I think, is that the weakest link in the chain is often where we go. That can often be a human factor, probably just 95% of the time, but it's also can be what might be the most obscure and small electric company or utility or water could actually be the tripwire that uh, knocks this off, knocks a much bigger impact off. And we don't have to look back to Ukraine to see how quickly that can go down, as, as Ned mentioned here. Um, these utility kinds of things don't get all the maybe press or understanding that the Ashley Madison hack or the OPM brief, because they have a little bit more titillating allure or whatever. But, uh, I mean, really, we don't have an internet if we don't have utilities. And that's the bottom line. And there are many parallel structures that the Colonel just mentioned here related to physical and network. So it really starts with the blood, which is the electricity. If we don't have it, we're really in trouble. And a couple of uh, studies in the last six months or so, one from BitSight, another from Tripwire, really talked about the exponential increase that Ned mentioned in the threat here. Now, we got to step back, too, when we look at the Internet. And we look back, those of us have been around since, uh, well, I don't want to say how long we've been around, but we go back to the late 80s before we had the Internet, and we look, we look at what's happened. We've probably created the second greatest, or maybe the greatest revolution in the history of man after the Industrial Revolution, or right? Pairing with that, as far as economic wealth, we have $20 trillion of some kind of commerce going through the Internet these days. Amazing, and it's only going to get bigger. And overall, to date, the overall impact of the cyber threat has probably been relatively modest, but it is rising quickly. And I only have to note that 1,100, 11,000 companies, or whatever the number was, uh, in the exponential growth at RSA to, uh, to deal with that. So I talked a little bit about how the, how the Guard can play, but really um, what's, what's probably most important to comprehend is cyber is really as much a human problem it is anything. I mean, spear phishing still leads the way. People click on things. It's happened in my own company. Um, we also have to take, so training and education is really important. Again, a role the Guard could help inside the states with. That's probably the number one thing we focus on in, in SAP National Security Services, making sure our folks are equipped to question and challenge. There was a, a Harvard Business Review uh, article last year that talked about how the Department of Defense has really taken this human <laughs> cultural aspect on. And it's really helped curb an awful lot of the attack. You know, there's great technical things that can happen, but at the end of the day, if, if the human factor isn't addressed, and that's both as users and in the IT areas where we stay up with patches and things of that nature, we don't address that we're, we're going to be out of business. So critically, the Guard can play there. Also leveraging the third offset strategy, the Department of Defense, which was discussed a little bit here. I, I really think it's a process, not an event with DOD, to relinquish some of this to the private sector. 
Silicon Valley, Austin, Texas, Boston, Massachusetts are going to be critically important as this problem is addressed and continues to be mitigated. It's not a static problem, we all know that. It's evolving. Measure, countermeasure game. So the more education we have, the better we leverage the partnership and the Guard's ability to leverage the DII initiatives and other things, the better we're all going to be. And it is about collaboration, ultimately, uh, between public, private, and other activities to deal with this. I mean, there is nothing more critical to our lives today than being connected. I mean, really, when we come down to it, we all complain about it at times, but we love it, too. So it all starts with electricity. Probably the only other thing that, that's right up there with power is the financial system, right? I often wonder what would happen if, if the financial system got cracked. I looked out the window and we see people in the street with guns and, I mean, probably the most important and certainly electricity is right behind it. So we need to, you know, really need to take these things seriously. We need to leverage the guard and all the assets in our country and we'll solve and address this problem for sure. Again, Mac, thanks for the opportunity to come here and talk to us.